Creative Barracks friends. Today, we're going to learn how to make Yoshi and Toad. All you, you need to do is unpackage all of the colors of polymer clay, spread them out so that you've got all of them available to you. Make sure you've got a nice clean working surface in front of you. If the table that you're working on isn't quite clean, give it a good wipe down or put a clean piece of paper on top because this clay will pick up any of the dirt, dust, or grime on your table and then it will be stuck in your little sculptures forever. So we don't want that, okay? Next, you're gonna wanna get a sculpting tool. This could be a toothpick. This could be a fancy little knife that you're allowed to use at home. Um, I have these fun little, they're dental tools, uh, but you can also use toothpicks. So because you don't have dental tools at home, I'm going to use my toothpicks today just to show you it's so easy to use. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we want to start with one of two of these characters. And I'm going to suggest we start with Toad, and I'll tell you why. Toad has a lot of white or skin tone on him, which means if you touch any of these other colors, it's going to pick up the colors. You'll notice that your hands get stained quite often with the colors. So we wanna make sure that we are using um, nice clean hands just like we wanna use a nice clean surface. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, let's build Toad's body. So if we have a look, Toad's body consists of a head, a body, some feet, little arms. We wanna focus on the tan colored area, the skin colored area. So you've got this big hunk of clay here. We wanna break this up into two pieces. So you can use your hands or you can use a tool. I'm gonna to just take one of those pieces Put it down. I'll take the other piece and I'm going to pinch off another small piece. Okay, so I have, when I roll them back into balls, I'll show you. I have three sizes I have a big, a little, and a medium. And it doesn't matter what the exact size is, okay? So if you're using your clay at home, you could even cut your clay in half and follow along with this, and you'd end up making like really tiny toads. Um, it's up to you to decide. So you'll see I've got a large, a medium, and a small. Excellent. I'm gonna take those two, that last small ball, I'm gonna rip it into two pieces, and I'm gonna roll them, okay, into little sausages. Okay, so we've got the two rolled into little sausages. These obviously will become Toad's arms. Once you've got Toad's arms, I'm just going to put them off to the side. We don't need them right now. I'm going to take the larger ball, okay? I'm going to roll it so it becomes more of an egg, okay? And then I'm going to take the medium circle and put it on top. And now all of a sudden we have Toad with a head, okay? It just kind of looks like an unfinished snowman, but that's fine. So we're going to leave those two here. We're not going to attach the arms yet. They're, they can just stay off the side, okay? Right now, it looks like an unfinished snowman. We need to make it look more toad-esque, correct? So what we need is some white. Now I gave you more white than this, um, whatever amount of white you want to use, because we need to make toad's diaper. So what I do is I take my piece of clay. I'm gonna just rip a small piece off for eyeball details later. Um, but I'm going to pinch it into a pancake. Okay, it doesn't have to be a fancy pancake. It doesn't have to be anything uh, too elaborate or too detailed, just a big flat piece, okay? And we wanna make it nice and big because we are going to stretch it over top of Toad's bottom, okay? So I'm gonna just wrap this around and maybe you'll have to overlap some of the clay to make it look more even, but that's okay. So now I can take my finger and just smooth it out so it looks nice and smooth. Okay, and as you practice sculpting, you'll notice that your sculpting uh, skills will get better and better and better. Okay, so this is just a quick, there we go, Toad's got the diaper on now. Okay, now the nice thing about this is you can decide which side looks the best. You want the best side to be facing outward because that's what we're going to see. That's where we're going to decorate our Toad. Next. I'm gonna take a couple little pieces of the brown, okay? Don't feel like you have to use it all if it seems too big, okay? I'm gonna roll these into little eggs. And you can use the table or you can use your hands, 
okay? What you want though is two little eggs that are roughly the same size. If there's one that's bigger than the other, just rip a little piece off. It's still a little bit too big, no big deal, okay? So, now that I have two little feet, I'm going to sort of position them where I think they should be on Toad. And then I'm going to take Toad's little body, I'm gonna squish it on top. Now this is tricky because you wanna be able to build it so that Toad can stand on its own. Okay, there, so I've got something like that. He stands, no problem. Okay, I'm gonna lay it back down so everyone can see. Next, we've gotta to give Toad his little vest. And we're going to do the vest just like we did the diaper. We're gonna take that deep blue, we're gonna give it a squish, soften up, give it, turn it into a pancake. Okay, turn it into a pancake. Try to massage any little cracks or bumps out of it before you apply it to your, your little uh, toad character. This just helps prevent you squishing toad because the more we add things onto the toad, um, the more you can actually just squish your character and it becomes kind of this funny squishy character instead. Um, but it comes with practice. Okay, so I have this pancake egg shape. I've stretched it out a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to come around the back of Toad. I'm going to wrap it over the back of Toad, kind of like he has a cape or wings. Whee! Um, and then I'm going to stretch it to make sure it fits all the way around to the front. Okay, it's kind of like, he's kind of got like a little genie vest. I don't really know what it's called officially, but it reminds me of a genie's vest. Okay, so you're just gonna squish that on gently so you don't like actually squeeze Toad. Okay, so now Toad's got this funny little shape and I'm gonna leave Toad standing there for a minute and I'm going to take my yellow and I'm gonna roll out a nice long snake. I suggest you roll out a snake longer than you need. Okay, it's always easier to make a, sna a snake shorter than it is to try and add on extra to a snake that's too short. So I'm just going to roll this out with my fingers on the table. Okay, I don't want it to be as thin as spaghetti. I want it to be a nice thin snake shape. Right, nice. Not too long, not too skinny. And try to make it as uh, consistent as you can. So once you've got that, you're going to take the edge and you're going to use that to make the trim around Toad's vest. So it curls around the front of his vest, down along the bottom of his vest, and back up. Okay, and I'm going to just, since I have lots, I'm just going to add it on till the end and squish it on there. That may not be accurate to the character, but I don't think it goes around the collar. Like this one, there's no yellow collar, but since I've got extra, I'm just doing it anyways. This is where you get to be an artist and you get to do whatever you want with your art. Okay, okay. Okay, so now Toad has a diaper, Toad has shoes, Toad has a vest, Toad has a head, but he's, Toad's got no arms. So this is where I'm going to squish on Toad's little arms. So it looks like they're coming out of the vest and maybe I'll just pose his arms wherever I want them to be because once it gets cooked, you can't pose the arms anymore. So if you wanna pose the arms, do it before you cook it. Okay, so right now we have a pretty generic looking creature. It doesn't even look like Toad because it needs the Toad mushroom cap. So you're gonna take a giant piece of that white, okay? We're gonna roll it into a ball and then you're gonna use your thumb, okay? And you're gonna squish a hole into it, almost like you're making a donut, but you're not actually breaking in through the, the clay, okay? So we're kind of making a bowl. Think of it as a bowl. A bowl with a thick rim, okay? Oops, that's not perfect, but that's okay. Once you've got that, you can put it on Toad's head, and that's where the magic starts happening. You've got to squish it to make it the right shape. Right, you gotta squish it to make it the right shape. Okay, so you kind of have this little mushroom cap head. Toad is like, it's nice and round. Okay, then you're gonna take some of your red, and I just suggest starting with little pieces. Okay, you don't need a lot. You don't want three-dimensional bumps, you want flat bumps. So 
I take the red, I flatten it into a dot, and then I squish the dot onto the head. Now, remember, these red dots can dye the white and skin tone clay. So be careful that you're not touching these areas without needing to, okay? So we'll do a couple more. Put one on the top. Okay, and again, because you're the artist, you get to go into so much detail if you want to. And if you don't want to, just have fun, right? If you have extras, that means you can turn them into anything you like. Okay, so there, there we've got a little creature that looks like Toad, just needs a face. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that black. Okay, I'm gonna make two little eyes. And classic Mario eyes are like little pieces of rice. Okay, and to make um, your characters look extra cute, you can always use a tiny bit of white. Okay, and you're gonna use it to make little shines in their eyes. And you wanna flatten them. You don't want them to be like sticking out. There we go. Okay, and then this is where your little tool comes in. You're just gonna come in and carve a little mouth. Okay. And then we've got a toad. We've got a toad. What do you think, everybody? Okay, so I'm gonna put toad off to the side for a minute. He can watch us create his friend Yoshi. So Yoshi's a little bit different, obviously. Um, the shape of his body is very different from Toad, but it's all very similar, okay? So I'm just gonna move some of these pieces off to the side so we've got a clear space to work. Get rid of some of the stuff we don't need anymore. Okay, so I'm going to start with the green. Now, if your hands are really red, it may be worth washing your hands before you start handling the green. Um, you'll notice this green is a little bit different than this color, but it doesn't make a difference. It all works the same. I'm going to start out by ripping the green into two pieces. I'm going to take one of those pieces and rip it into two. I'm going to take the other piece and rip it into two. And remember, this isn't an exact measurement or a science. It's just relative size to each piece. Okay, so I'm gonna keep one of these pieces for the body. I'm going to keep one of these pieces for the head. I'm going to keep one of these pieces for the tail. And we're gonna break this piece up. Okay, so I'm gonna rip it into two. This piece, I'm going to put beside one of these pieces. This is going to be the bumps for the eyes. The leftover, I'm going to rip into two more pieces, okay? This will eventually become his legs. This piece is going to get ripped into two more to become the arms, okay? So I know that was a little confusing. If you need to, go back and rewatch that part or even watch it slow down, that'll help, okay? Now that we have all these green pieces ready to go, Let's start with some little things. So just like before, we can roll out two little sticks for Yoshi's arm and put them aside, okay? Then let's go to the body. The body is going to become a ball that we squish into a very thick pancake, okay? Very, very thick pancake. Then we put that down. I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm going to roll this into a ball and then into an egg a little bit. And I'm gonna put that on top of the square body. Okay, then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna roll it into a little bit of a log Okay, 
And then I want to mold it. I'm going to take my little sculpting tool. I want to make an indent in the middle. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to put that, watch this, I'm going to put that on top. Okay, and then I'm going to smooth all this out very carefully so it looks like all these pieces belong to one another. They're attached to one another. They're not three pieces stuck together. They're actually just one piece. So I go over any of the cracks with my fingertips. Okay, This may change some of the shape. That's okay. It helps me give Yoshi more of a neck. Okay, so now Yoshi's got his nose, his eyes. Try challenge by all means. There. Okay, so I have this. It looks kind of like a t dinosaur without legs. Okay, it looks like a really cute character actually. Now, I'm going to take this last piece. I'm going to roll it into a ball. Okay, but then I'm going to squish the ball. And I'm going to make Yoshi's whole body jump on top. Okay. Something like that. Very, very simple. Okay. Then I'm going to take my orange. I'm going to rip it in half because I want to make the feet and I want to be able to make the, the spikes. So just for simplicity, I'm kind of going to um, just make his legs and his feet one solid piece and then we can kind of detail things in. So I'm making, again, sort of this log egg shape. And then I'm going to squish it flat and let Yoshi jump on top. Okay, so now Yoshi's got some feet. You can use your toothpick to put that little groove in between the two feet. So at least it looks like Yoshi's got two feet. If you really want to go into detail, you can make it look like Yoshi's got a little um, line for the legs and you can go down to the bottom here there we go just in case you want like a full view most realistic yoshi you can get okay there now we've got the basis of yoshi before we squish in all of these little spike details we want to put the yellow details on his belly this is because it's easier to do that um, without messing up all of the other details so I'm just going to take a little bit of my white. I'm going to squish it into a worm. I'll squish that worm onto the bottom of Yoshi's tail and then squish it down flat. Okay. There we go. Nice and flat. Same thing on the belly. You're going to take a small piece. You're going to roll it out into more of a egg shape, a flat egg shape, and then tuck it and flatten it onto Yoshi's chest. Okay, you can use your toothpick to get into those small areas. Okay, so now we have like this kind of dinosaur shape that doesn't quite look yo like Yoshi just yet, but don't worry, we're going to fix that. Okay, do, 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 there. Okay. I'll round out the nose a little bit, got a little bit messed up. Okay, now. Let's again do some of those flat details so we don't mess up three-dimensional details. Yoshi's eyes. So again, you get the two white pieces, you roll them out, you squish them onto those lumps sticking up above his head. Those are like his, his brow, I guess you would call it. Try and make it somewhat similar. Okay, so Yoshi's got two eyes. And then I'll take a little bit of black. Okay, I'm going to cut Yoshi a mouth. Okay, you can even give Yoshi eye uh, nose holes, and it's up to you. You can give them nose holes by carving the nose holes, or you can just give Yoshi black nose holes. That's fine with me. Um, as I'm doing this, part of me is like, does Yoshi even have nose holes? I'm like, I don't know, but we're going to go with it. Okay, so 
we've got this dragon-like creature that looks somewhat like Yoshi, but it's missing some really key details. Um, classic Yoshi used to have a saddle. So if you want to put a saddle on Yoshi, use some of the leftovers. You can add a saddle. But if you don't want to add a saddle, all you have to do is take your leftover orange, pinch little pieces off, squish them into little triangles. Okay, and then you're just going to squish them carefully onto the back of Yoshi until he looks just like you want him to. Okay, and again, this is where you can have lots of fun with details if you really want. Okay, go as far into detail as you'd like, or if you're not feeling the detail, only do what you want. Okay, so here's an example as I put one on and it kind of got squished. No big deal, you can change things up. Okay. head. Now the buns on the back of his head are a little larger than the ones on his tail so I grabbed a little bit more clay than I did for the first ones. I'm going to squish them on. And you'll see that as things get like into these tiny little areas, it's a little bit more difficult to do. But if you've got small hands, it's a little bit easier. Okay, and then finally, we're going to bring in Yoshi's arms. And you're just going to squish on Yoshi's arms. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Okay, so we've got Yoshi and Toad. There you have it, my friends. Okay. Now, before you bake them, you, again, want to make sure that they can stand upright. Okay. Um, if they don't stand, they're not going to stand after they're cooked. So you want to do all the hard work you can in the, in, before you bake them to make sure that they stand. Then you're going to pop them in the oven, Okay, just like uh, your cookies. You're going to pop them in the oven for 10 minutes at 200 degrees. That's all it needs. But the most important thing is when they are hot, they are more fragile then than they are right now. Right now you can bump them, you can drop them, they'll squish a little bit, but at least you can fix the squish. Once they're baked, you can't fix any squish or damage to them, and you'll have to glue things together with hot glue. If you would like to glue your characters to the Yoshi brick included in your kit, ask your parents to use a little bit of hot glue for you. You can just put a little bit on the bottom after it comes out of the oven and then just squish it down on top. Now, the most important thing when I run these classes or do these workshops is reminding kids that these are pieces of art, okay? They look really cool. They're probably really fun to play with but they're fragile. So if you decide that you're going to play with them, just remember that perhaps trying to play with your artwork isn't the best idea. And maybe if you don't want them to get broken, it's better to put them on a shelf where you can look at them all the time. Okay, cool. I hope you have lots of fun. And if you liked this tutorial, check out our Barracks by the Grand for Kids playlist. We have all sorts of other painting and drawing activities that you can follow along with at home. Okay?